and even the National Weather Service has some severely worn storms going on. In northern Bradford County, we have one by Tawanda and Troy. There's also a flood watch that's going to be in place starting tomorrow at 12 p.m. and going until Friday, Christmas Day, till 12 p.m. If you're feeling a little bit under the weather, hopefully this weekend forecast for you in State College will make you smile a little bit with some sunshine possibly peeking through some of the clouds. Plenty of sunshine, perfect day, get out there, throw a pool party, grilling, bike ride, whatever you want to do, Saturday's your day to do it. One thing I want to grab your attention to is the flow coming out of the northwest. This is bringing in cooler air over the warm Great Lakes, which is resulting in this. We're seeing lake effects, snow showers, and rain showers moving across the state. Too busy to get out and enjoy the sun? Don't worry, there's still plenty of time. Come play in your weekend with me tonight at 10. We had some flakes flying earlier this week, and it's been quite chilly, so I had to start checking out some winter activities. That was the trend for most of this week, and today was no exception. Was out there for about 10 to 15 minutes today and felt like I was already getting a tan. Yeah, Joe, we had quite the warm and dry stretch for a while, but then had a cold front move through midweek. And this weekend, Joe, looks a little unsettled as well. Well, hopefully uh, Ryan can deliver some good news as he will be giving us the forecast later in the show. This road used to be lined with houses, but they were either washed away or torn down over the years due to their extensive damage from the flooding. Well, everyone, the warm and dry stretch we've been seeing this past week is coming to an end tomorrow as a cold front will be advancing across the region. But today we're seeing those sunny conditions here at Beaver Stadium where temperatures are already getting into the upper 60s. And we'll continue to see those increase as we head into this afternoon. Seeing a lot of the same across central Pennsylvania, seeing temperatures getting into the upper 60s. Some spots across the Commonwealth already getting into the 70s, especially cities out in western Pennsylvania and we'll see those temperatures continue to rise as we head into this afternoon. Looking at satellite and radar, not a lot to talk about today in the Northeast as high pressure lingers off the East Coast, but things will be changing as we head into tomorrow as we're tracking that next weather maker, a cold front currently sitting over the Midwest. That'll start to move eastward and that'll bring our next chance for some much needed rain tomorrow. And this rain is much needed because look at this, the drought monitor, we have seen a reduction since last week here in the drought monitor but we still have a ways to go. So that moisture will be welcome associated with that cold front. So let's time it out here for you. Looking at clouds starting to increase as we head into this evening. And we're going to start to see that cold front creeping in from the west as we head into the morning hours of Wednesday, right as you might be heading out the door for work. So make sure you have that umbrella handy with you. And then as we start heading into the dinner time hours on Wednesday, this is where we start to see the moisture being more widespread in parts of southeastern Pennsylvania. And those showers could linger into the early hours of Thursday and so could that cloud cover as well. We're going to start to see conditions clear as we head into the end of the work week as a high pressure moves in behind the cold front. Today, seeing plenty of sunshine, temperatures getting into the low 70s, that's almost 20 degrees above average for this time of the year. The average high is 52 degrees for this time of the year. Tonight, temperatures getting into the low to upper 50s, and those clouds will be on the increase ahead of that cold front. Tomorrow, temperatures gain back into the 60s, and we'll see that much needed moisture with that cold front. Now looking at the seven day, seeing more clouds in this forecast than last week as we have that cold front for tomorrow on Veterans Day. Then we start to clear out for the end of the work week, but as we start heading into the weekend, things start to look a little more unsettled again as we track a low pressure system for the end of the weekend. Something to also note is those temperatures gain more close to average for this time of the year as we head into the weekend as well. Now I'm going to send it over to Preston at the anchor desk. been a wet start to the work week which has given us a break from the dry stretches we've been seeing the last couple weeks here in central Pennsylvania seeing conditions clearing at Beaver Stadium right now where temperatures are currently sitting in the upper 50s we did have a cold front move through this morning but that has now continued to move eastward and we are seeing some lingering moisture in places like western and central Pennsylvania but that cloud cover will continue to gradually clear as we start working our way into this afternoon and evening looking at a bright a wider view we do see that plenty of moisture is working its way into the northeast with plenty of relief expected for the drought. Hopefully we'll see a dent put in the drought that the region has been seeing for some time now. And speaking of drought, look here in central Pennsylvania, seeing a wide bullseye of moderate drought and also severe drought, which has now started to encompass State College and Williamsport. And hopefully we'll see some relief and a dent put in this drought monitor as we saw some rain yesterday with the remnants of Hurricane Delta and also some showers this morning associated with a cold front. Temperatures across central Pennsylvania right now seeing into the upper 50s and some places like Altoona gain into the 60s. 
much of the same across the Commonwealth, with mostly seeing upper 50s, some places already gaining the 60s like Erie and Philadelphia. Expect you to see those temperatures continue to increase as the cloud cover starts to lessen as we head into the afternoon. Starting to see gradual clearing as we head into Tuesday afternoon. Most will be clear by this evening and overnight hours looking clear as well. Can't allow some clouds moving in from the northern tier and into parts of central Pennsylvania, but most will remain clear as high pressure continues to dominate the region into the middle of the week. See a weak boundary move through on Wednesday evening. That'll just bring some cloud covers to the northern tier and parts of central Pennsylvania, but that will move out as we head into the morning of Thursday, where we will start to track our next weather maker. But for today, we're starting to clear out. Temperatures gain into the low to mid 60s here in central Pennsylvania. Overnight, temperatures dropping into the low 40s with mostly clear conditions. As we start heading into tomorrow, we have temperatures rising back up into the 60s with plenty of sunshine to go around. So make sure you get out there and enjoy it. For a seven day, I'm seeing some sun and I'm also seeing some drought relief with a cold front on Friday. Conditions clearing out as we head into the middle of the week, seeing a chance for rain on Friday. Sunshine back in the forecast for Saturday and things starting to clear up, cloud up again as we head into the end of the weekend. Now I'm gonna send it over to Gwen with sports. How cold will it be? How much snow will fall? These are commonly asked questions, but many do not know about the various winter weather phenomena that bring these conditions to them. These phenomena can range from snow spalls all the way to nor'easters that can contain various precipitation types with them. Aside from different precipitation types accompanying these phenomena, they also come in different sizes. Lake effect bands at times may only impact a couple cities, while winter storms can cover thousands of miles. Snow squalls and lake effect snow bands are known for their scattered nature, quick drop in visibility, and their sharp snowfall gradients. Snow squalls are essentially these snow showers that can produce moderate to heavy snow and oftentimes will move across an area very rapidly, causing very rapid reductions in visibility and pretty quick accumulations of snow. And oftentimes they're accompanied by wind as well. The rapid onset of snow squalls cause huge issues for travel. In a matter of minutes, your visibility can go from 20 miles to 20 yards. A quick drop in visibility and slick road conditions from the snow produced by these squalls often lead to car accidents. So the National Weather Service actually developed a warning for this weather event because of how much of an impact they can have on traffic. One type of snow squall is lake effect snow. Lake effect snow is produced when the Great Lakes are warmer than the cold air moving across them. This results in vertical motions that lead to these bands of lake-induced snow. On a larger scale, winter storms can cover thousands of miles with rain, snow, freezing rain, and sleet. Ice storms and nor'easters fall into the winter storm category. Both of these winter phenomena are low-pressure systems that bring different impacts with them. Nor'easters are specific to the east coast of the United States. This phenomenon gets its name from the winds ahead of the storm being out of the northeast where all the snow is coming down. Winds associated with these low pressure systems also cause storm surge along the mid-Atlantic and New England coast, which results in coastal flooding. On the other hand, you have ice storms that are major ice events resulting from freezing rain accumulations of greater than a quarter of an inch. Ice storms are another fascinating, fascinating type of winter storm. And there's a really interesting, pretty basic weather setup that you need for an ice storm, right? You need a little bit of warm air aloft to kind of melt that snow that comes down, turns it to liquid again, and then you hit this shallow layer of cold air where that rainfall freezes upon contact on the ground and produces the most treacherous winter weather there is. Power outages after ice storms pose a serious life-threatening risk as a lot of winter weather fatalities occur from generators being too close to a house or even indoors. When facing not only ice storms, but all types of winter phenomena, it is important to stay safe and be prepared. Make sure the antifreeze in your car can handle low enough temperatures, you have snow tires on your vehicles, and your windshield wiper fluid is filled up. A winter survival kit in your car is also important to have. You better have your winter survival kit in there. And, and that means having extra warm clothes. Um, I even carry a, a little uh, charger in there, a little charging block that I have charged up for my cell phone that's in there. And I'll go and check it every once in a while and recharge it. Um, make sure you have uh, a, a bottle or two of water in there. 
extra blankets, um, all of what you might need to survive in case you do get stuck in your vehicle. A flashlight with extra batteries in it. Um, those are the types of things that you want to have and a little extra food as well. Also make sure to tune into your local weather forecast. Weather forecasts have come a long way over the years and winter weather forecasts are quite complex because of the various precipitation types that come with these phenomena. Determining where that rain and snow line may lie is quite a difficult task. In the end, you will be happy that you are prepared and set for whatever old man winter may want to throw at you. For Weather or Not, I'm Nick Guzzo.